Hi, triple feature today. Three flashlights, all of them have a 21700 battery, a tail switch, a side switch, a single LED, up-to-date performance, internal charging. But what are the differences and what are the points that make you want one of them more than the others? So let's find out. Hello my dear friends and welcome to a new video from Mad Max Deals and Reviews. At first I want to say thank you to the manufacturers for sending me the samples and of course I did not receive any payment or something else for my work. So I am free to review what I want and in the way I want. They did not tell me which tests I am not allowed to do like others. Um, that's why they are here. I did my tests, I had them on my lumen box and made a lot of measurements, took me quite a lot of time, I played a lot with them and now I try to give you my impressions. That's my personal opinion, uh, things that might be not so nice in my point of view, that will be the kicker for you to say, yeah, that's mine, That's I want it because of this feature and Mad Max doesn't know anything. Let me know in the comments. And also, please, uh, it will be a little bit hard to have the three flashlights. If I forget one point on one light, uh, let me know. Please comment or please contact me on martin at madmax.com so I can go back to with an additional information. Maybe it's interesting for other people too, then I can make a follow-up video or what else. So let's do it as a community. And yeah, Please, maybe I earn the, your subscription helping my channel to grow. That would be awesome too. So, starting. I will not do a big unboxing thing, but I want to be just complete what you receive with each flashlight. Of course, all of them include their own branded 21700 cells. You get the charging cables, you get uh, boxes with all the data on it. And let's start from there. All right, they have this new style and I have to say I like it. This is boxes I would not throw away. This nice vivid pictures on the front makes it really nice. And there is a magnetic flap and some information that there is an insulation which all of them use and you have to put that away and uh, have to charge it before the use. So that's regular but it's a nice way to do it. I like it. Um, there is the charging cable and let's start with that a little for short. Uh, OLED uses their own system. They have this magnetic charger which just pops on there and there is also a LDOC uh, which I have a picture right now so which of course works too. So all the newer flashlights that's different from the old ones like this um, magnetic the S1R. So this all, all this is one system which I like but you are bound to their cables. You cannot use another cable like other companies using standard industrial uh, ports and connectors. So that's nice having it in this system, but the other, the other having another standard is also nice. So that's up to you what you prefer. And with the M2R Pro, they introduced a new charger that's blue and red, indicating that's capable of two amps of charging uh, current. That's very nice. And of course, I tested, you can charge with the old chargers with one amp, so no problem there too. So charging cable is included. Of course, user manual with big lots of things. You, if you need a link to find it online, contact me, maybe you'll find it yourself, but it would, it's too time consuming. There is a lanyard included. There is yes, this insulation tab and they have a very, very nice high quality holster with this steering. Yes, I learned how that the name is. There is uh, two loops for your belt. One is fit, is suit on, the other one has this push button. It's a non-stretch material and it's quite thick. And they have this latch on the front to, to open it. Um, that's 
it's high quality. It's, I really liked it. So, first one, put that away. <clears throat> Second one, let's look for the Chatbeam accessories. Chatbeam has a regular cardboard box. Nothing bad as this, but would not keep something like that. Uh, there is a standard holster with this uh, Velcro. So I prefer the latches because here in the Velcro, if you have it outside, it can rip open itself. I think mo maybe more easy than some other way to close it. Uh, and when that gets dirty, the quality of this, the Velcro, it has less and less power over time. They also have two, uh, two latches, one suit, one with the uh, push button and here on the side that's kind of um, stretch material so that's maybe more a universal holster so you can use for other lights. Charging cable. They use this USB type C which is very new and the pro is many many uh, other uh, <clears throat> Power, uh, power banks or mobile phones and whatever. A lot of things use USB type C or even if you have, you can get an USB, micro USB to USB C adapter too. So you can use your phone charger or your car charger, your power bank, whatever to charge a flashlight using this industrial standard. That's a big plus. This charging cable with less than 20 centimeters yeah, that's really short. When I plugged it to my wall mounted plug where I have my measuring device, the flashlight was hang hanging in the air. So that's, that's not so nice. So making a longer cable would be great in my opinion. A nice add on is they have here a secondary USB port, which is not a power bank function, but you can use, uh, when you have one plug in your car, you can charge phone phone or flashlight and have another charging cable going to the power bank or the phone or whatever you you have you do not um block your one port that's a nice add-on so of course user manual warranty card there is a spare o-ring which is not uh, from um, oled does not have a spare part um, then there is a spare rubber boot for the tail switch and uh, Chapim has this rubber cigar grip thing. Uh, I, I like that. Uh, that that's just quite cool. But if you want to use a belt clip, that's included also. So you can just uh, roll off this rubber part and clip on the belt clip. So Chapim done. Next one, Phoenix. Unfortunately, uh, one of the Austrian custom guys wanted to play with my flashlight, so he completely ripped open and abused the nice Phoenix box and spilled everything into the outer box. So all of the parts were outside of uh, the protective plastic. It should be in there. So, but I didn't say any, any, they didn't break it, fortunately. There is an information which was held on the clip that there is an insulation tab, so you remove it before use, of course. Next step would be a charging cable. That's a little bit longer, but hey, give us half a meter or three quarters, or like one meter of cable. You can make a loop in the cable, you make it shorter, but you cannot stretch the cable if you have not enough room. So these short cables are nice, but in the car, where would you put the parts? So I, I would love longer cables. From all of them. Uh, again, USB A to USB C, nothing fancy. Uh, there is, of course, the user manual, which is uh, have quite a lot of information, and I do not know any other um, manufacturer having runtime graphs to show how the flashlight works, to make it visible that there is a step down from in turbo you have heat of course all of them have it but they make a graph so people can read and hopefully understand what these high numbers mean over time so that's a cool add-on I, I like that then we have of course uh, a lanyard and uh, replacement switch cover replacement o-ring and this standard I say standard. It's it's not bad quality. There is no. It's it's nicely done. It's not bad suit or something, but it's 
just a standard holster uh, with a weld pro flap here. There is just suit on uh, a, um, a loop. There is a second small loop. You could be maybe have um, a power cord through it or a key ring. So have it dangling somewhere. Use a small carabiner to put it on the backpack. Backpack. That's a nice addition too. So, and when we spoke about the charging things. Let's start with those technical things. Uh, I took a lot of numbers and when I made that's one of three sheets of numbers I took, uh, I had to recharge, recharge them often and I tried to plug it in on a one amp wall plug and uh, I tried to plug in in the 45, uh, 45 watts uh, PD 2.0. That's a very high power USB-C charger and so on. So I tried a lot of different things. And here's what I found out. Let's start with the OLED. OLED with their own cable or with the two amp cable or the one amp cable. Uh, they could be connected to any USB port. That's no problem and it charged the cell to 4.16, 4.17 volts, which is on the safe side, very nice. Uh, the jet beam, it connected to any USB-A outlet and charged with around one, one and a half amp uh, and charged to exactly 4.20 volts. Very good job. But I could not uh, charge when the cell was more than 4.1 volts, so it had to be drained to 4.05, something like that, then it started the charging. And to charge, you have to click switch it on, and then when you plug in the charger, the light goes off and it is in the charging cycle. And it did not work on a USB-C to USB-C cable. So the high power USB-C protocol does not read in there and it does not allow to charge. So you need USB-A to USB-C. But charging itself, well done. Phoenix, they could be, this one could be charged on USB-C to C, A to C, whatever. But I found um, it was has an oscillating amp draw. When I post, uh, had it on my two amps, uh, on my three amp uh, charger, that's a quick charger, uh, I saw, um, the amps oscillating from 2.4 to 2.8 amps up and down and up and down it pulses the amps in there and it got hot it has more than 40 degrees while charging i want i think it was 42 43 degrees which is not dangerous but it's you see there's a lot of power pushed into it uh, and unfortunately it overcharged very often the cell to 4.2 Four volts. This is on the high side of the safety range. So maybe when you charge your sample or when you got yours, have a look inside, use a multimeter, let it charge and then see what your sample. Maybe it's just mine a little bit too encouraged to put the current in. That's for charging. Charging ports, yeah. Uh, the magnetic flap on thingy. Jetbeam has, has it here. I will have some picture so you have a better view that's uh, that's quite nicely done so you when you when you push it in correctly it will sit in there quite nice so you cannot easily snap it open Phoenix uses a bigger flap here and when you sometimes when you stick a little bit on it it's easy to pop it open sometimes it sticks well I don't I didn't find out what's the problem is and sometimes you just uh, slide it on your hand or on your body and it rips open. So like this, see, so it could be hold more. Uh, what I did not find out to the moment is I know some manufacturers have the USB port inside sealed it watertight. So the flap is just for dirt. So no, no dirt comes in or less dirt comes in, but it does not affect the waterproofness. I will find out and hopefully I can add it afterwards. So let's go to the interesting part. How bright are they and how is the brightness achieved? Uh, Phoenix 
has a reflector design signality of course like the others a R coated lens is there so as you would expect it and they have an SST40 LED and claim to make 1600 lumens. I measured up to 1680 lumens which is a plus of 5% and after 30 seconds it was still 1607 so on the point. The Jetbeam Jet 3MR they have the biggest head, also reflector, also AR coated lens. So there's that's all high brand, high quality brand. So you, I have not seen any problems in the mechanical parts, bad threadings. Uh, there's everything is 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 looped. So at that point, they are perfect in the in the appearance of all. Jetbeam claims to have 2,000 lumens out of their XHP35 high density LED. Unfortunately, I was a just able to get 1630 lumens on switching on, which is a loss of 18.5% and uh, 1525 lumens after 13 seconds. I, of course, repeated the test and when I did my testing, I alternated the, uh, the flashlights. So if my equipment would be drifting away, I would see that uh, when I have one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, that when it drifted down, also the sample having from, from measured before and having then the next turn, this one also would have been drifted, but they have all the measurements have been in line. So there's, it's fixed to each other. And I have a calibrated or two calibrated flashlights to check if my flash, uh, my tube gives me numbers I can believe in. So I did spend a lot of time testing and I believe my numbers, they are not scientifically, so do not get it on the number one. But uh, I think you can see the trend. If one manufacturer always have more than claimed and the other one has always has less than claimed, so you can see the direction where it's going. And last but not least, OLED M2R Pro. They have an XHP35 LED, which is de-domed in the factory. I've seen how they did it but I cannot tell you, sorry. Um, they claim 1800 lumens using a TIR optic, a total internal reflection. That's an optical system with a lot of angles and the light is bouncing around. So they claim 1800 lumens and I measured on switch on 1960 lumens, which is a plus of 8.9% and 1840 lumens after 30 seconds, still a little bit above what they claim. Um, on the throw measurements, I also repeated five times, I measured on five meters. Um, Phoenix, they claim 283 meters, which equals to 1900, 977 candela. And I measured 21,575 candela, which e calculates to 295 meters, plus of 8%. Jet beam with the big head. They claim 390 meters, which is uh, 38,025 candela. I measured just 29,725 candela, which calculates to 345 meters, which is a loss of 21.8%. And the Olight, uh, they claim 299 meters. 22,400 candela. I measured 27,650 candela, which calculates to 333 meters, uh, giving us a plus of a little bit more than 23%. So giving a ballpark numbers. Uh, let's go into some, uh, some details. What I think is also a pro and con, a plus or minor thing are the batteries or the use of batteries. Let's start with the OLED. OLED uses their own batteries, their own, uh, they manufacture them. I've seen that also having their circuits on it on, and such things. And they have special design. They have the plus and the minus on the front side and the minus here on the back side. This is 
little bit of a problem for me because you cannot use any other cell. You cannot use a standard flat top, you cannot use a standard button top, which I do not have. Whoopsie. But I tried with, uh, with the magnet, so you cannot use um, a flat top. Let's do it like this. Have a magnet. Not for home use, the magnets, okay? Uh, button top with magnet did not work. 18650 with extender tube did not work. And standard um, long cell, that's an Imalent 21700 with an integrated charging, so that's 75 millimeters, that's enormous long. Nothing else works in the OLED. So you have to buy a second battery from this type if you want a spare. That's a downside. The jet beam, jet beam opens also on the teal cap. Jet beam has a double spring in the tail switch, which I like to re uh, reduce the resistance. They have a spring on the front side, which is cool. So they're included button top standard size cell. It can be replaced by 18650 with this tube. Or if you're outside in the, in the woods, Use the 18650 and a towel to, se to center it. It will work in emergency. You can use the flat tops, the button tops, and even this ultra long uh, 21700 did work. So on points, on all of you can charge all of them inside the, the flashlight. So that's very unique, very uh, not your really unique, universal. So you can use a lot of lithium ion batteries in there if they fit somehow. The Phoenix, they open only from the head, so the tail cap is part of the fixed design. They include the protected 21700 cell, which is very long due to, you don't know what's, what's inside. Uh, it's as long as, and it's, it's even longer, no, where is it, here. It's as long as the 75 millimeter Imalent with the integrated charging. And uh, Phoenix uses a contact button in the head, and these two thingies in the left and the right side, no, uh, above and down, they are uh, protecting that you cannot use in the reverse, reverse direction. So you need to have a button top. You can use flat top cell with a magnet to fake that, but that's not recommended. But uh, having, when you get, uh, get rid of this contact problem, so you need a button top, while the jet beam can use button top and flat top, then the size is very good too. I cannot see down there. I, I think I cannot show. It's a single spring design, but the spring itself is, has quite a long travel, so you can use the short batteries too. So that's that's not very good but good get rid of so you cannot use the flat tops but you can use all the sizes let's keep it that way so put them away um, then I think one of the last things to show you is that maybe the most important thing the user interface how do they work and they are very different in the way how they work too. Whoops, oh, where get, did I get? There's jet beam batteries here, all the batteries in there. So now I start with the jet beam and the Phoenix because they are very similar compared to each other in the user interface and the OLED is very different. So Phoenix and the jet beam. Both have the tail switch, which allows a momentary brightness by half pressing. Full pressing switches the flashlight on. And then you have the power buttons, which of course have green and red and flashing and so on to make it, um, to indicate the charging level. Do you see? Jet beam goes from high to low. And Phoenix goes from low to high. If you hold the button, both of them start to strobe. 
Singe, go back to the last mode memorized. And that's a little bit a problem for me. If you are in some middle level, you switch them off and you switch them on, you come back in this level. I did not found any way uh, how to make sure I can start in turbo or in low. So that's just switch on, switch off, and then you can change the brightnesses. And there is no triple, double click, whatever. And when it's off, it's off. You cannot do anything on those, of course. This also indicates what I like a lot. You can have half a turn and you can mechanically lock out these flashlights. So they are now really safe. So nothing can happen. They cannot come on in your backpack and ignite something or burn holes to your skin or to your backpack and just tighten it and they are back on again. This one is in the, in the low mode now. So there it is. That's simple, that's nice, but the downside is you cannot choose which brightness level you want to charge. The Olight, they have uh, used in the M2R Pro this new tail cap switch that is not a clicky, it's an electronic switch and it has two levels. Maybe start with that. If you soft press, you start in stock configuration in the medium one mode or medium two. 250 lumens, something like that. So that's a middle brightness, which is very useful for most of the things. Full click gives the tu momentary turbo. Momentary when you press and hold for longer than half a second. If you give him just a tap, it stays on. So, sh so short click is on, short click is off, click and hold is momentary. And that's a little bit, uh, you, you do not get it always on the point. So the, it's quite hard to press. So I think it's hard to, uh, to accidentally activate it because you need to press quite deep and quite hard, but it's, it's not, it's, a, it's stiff. It's, it's not a bad switch, but you get, need to get used to it. Let's say it that way. And there is a second configuration. If you full press and click the side switch once, uh, you changed it to momentary turbo on half press and momentary strobe on full press. So that could be a nice thing if you maybe um, in law enforcement or something like that, you use the standard configuration for your work, for searching something. And when you go f looking for the bad people, you just switch the configuration with one click. And then you can go and have this, if you want to have the, the weapon, you have this turbo and full click is strobe for hunting bad people. I don't know, I'm not a police officer. If that is true, let me know. If you think that's not true that the people work like that, please comment. Uh, the downside of their system, which the plus and the minus on the battery in the front is, you cannot unlock. So if you unscrew the tail cap, you cannot use the tail switch anymore, but the front switch, the side switch is still in use. Say so they, they are in parallel. They are not serial connected. So uh, does not matter if it's on or off on the, on, the, on the tail switch. You have this tactical function here and you have the regular function here. Short click is on in the last mode memory. Click and hold as on all the OLEDs toggles the brightness from low to high. And the single switch is off. So you have the possibility, oh, click and hold. Let's start in a one lumen uh, eco mode or moon mode. That's very nice. But this problem with not able to be in unlock, uh, it needs you to have an electronic lock. Click and hold until it comes on, then it goes off again. Now it's locked. If you switch the button, it comes red, telling you you cannot switch it on now. Okay, so click and hold again until it comes on, then it's back to normal operation. So you have three ways, several ways to start this flashlight. Using the side switch, you can decide last mode memorized with a short click, long click, 
would go into the moon level and you can use the back switch to momentary or permanently use it so that's up to you uh, but of course you have to get used to it you need to play with it you need to adapt to the way you have to operate the flashlight uh, maybe important for some people all of the three have a hole for the lanyards of course um, yeah because they have been in the um, in the boxes um, but all that is the only one which allows a tail stand the other ones cannot do that the bezel is of course a, a little bit crenellated on the um, on the phoenix a little bit more on the jet beam and Olight the M2R has a really hard and very pointy um, bezel here um, yeah I told you no production problems at all yeah what is nice I, as I told uh, showed you the jet beam has this standard um, standard uh, clip for the the standard belt clip which is here Phoenix and Olight have this very nice S bend so you can use it upside down on the inner bend or you can use it uh, with upside up the light up if you use the second bend so you can even when you have um, a cap on you can mount it on the cap for emergency like a head headlamp if you need both hands free so this this S, S bend design kind of a deep deep pocket uh, I like it so um, maybe a short look on the beam shape because this is interest to mention too this uh, reflectors have a quite let's be sure they are in in the high mode that's in high here yes high too so let's let's start with the phoenix if you look like this you see the angle here how where the light comes out of the flashlight there is the center beam which is similar to them the spot and here in the spill you have an, uh, maybe 45 degrees the jet beam has a very similar maybe even more tighter beam and the Olight is not into here is now it's in turbo you see how flat this light comes out so that means there is a very tight spot but there is a lot of white spill here that means if you go you have the spot for the searching and you have the spill to see what's around but and when the spill is wide it will be dimmer in a shorter distance than an, a spill that is very uh, very tight I hope you can imagine what I mean we will see in outside too so I'm going with the OLED maybe that's 15 centimeters from from this black part small spot and the spill touches the edges of my black canvas here that's 20 centimeters and then when I do 20 centimeters with the other with a reflector flashlight you see how much tighter this is so there is near to no light around the spill area and that works for all of the reflector flashlights okay so let's go outside and look what it looked like there so here is the spot with the phone, phone camera here is what I have with me there is OLED's M2R Pro Warrior Phoenix PD36 uh, R the Jet Beam Jet 3MR the Phoenix PD35 Tactical of course our beloved GT Mini for reference and a new pocket thrower whoopsie shadow that's the T11 from Welltool 
So, camera is here. So, let's go. Let's have a look. Yes. So, you see, ISO is 1620 is the shutter speed. Everything is set to manual and hopefully we are good to go. So, let's switch there. So, let's start GT Mini on Turbo. So if you know my spot, you should be very familiar. Here is a small road going to 150 meters then there in the corner. This small tree is 100 meters from where I stand. This line there, there is a street at 140 meters. And unfortunately today it's, let's try, I will point an arrow in there which point is the 140 because it's all kind of white from these leaves here. So you cannot see the 140 meters, but we see more than that, maybe 200 meters, 250 to the trees up there. What we will not see with the other lights is here. Now I hit the barn at 400 meters, but the Olight on the other ones, they will not reach that far down. So that's why I pointed the camera here on the left side so we can have a look on this small hill. This is 130 meters away so we can see how the beam shape looks like on that point. So first one Olight's M2R Pro Warrior. Click directly to turbo and we see a very, if I point it here and that's way, a very sharp uh, a sharp edge of the uh, of the spot and not a lot in the throw the spill around so it's a very nice way to distribute the light down there very even so there is no hot spot in the middle I do like this TRI optics next one Phoenix PD36R there's similar in lumens, you see the white light is a little bit colder than the D-domed XHP35. And we see the hot spot is wider. I hear some goose some behind me. Of course, no chance to reach to the 400 meters. Maybe the bigger head of the Jet 3MR. No no chance to so you see i was in turbo no chance for the 400 meters but of course easy the 100 and the 140 and if you look here easy to reach the small hill in here for comparison the pd35 tech it had around 950 to 980 lumens something like that and you see the missing lumens downrange the tree and, uh, on 100 is visible. The road and 140 and beyond that, you can notice it when, when walking in the night, of course, with the adapted eye. But here on the hill, you see how the lumens are needed to illuminate the range. And just for fun, the T11 from Welltool. That's a little bit more than 500 lumens concentrated to one tight beam, one spot. Again, there is the barn, easily to reach. Now here's the hotspot on the road. And behind there, there are some trees. It's, might, it's 250 meters, something like that. But it's too foggy to see them very nicely. And now let's point it here in the middle of this small hill so you see small spot comparing with OLEDs M2R we see the ice up there someone is disturbed by me maybe a rabbit or a deer so nice if I used it as a pointer here's the edge of the beam is visible here and then this here is not a lot of light. In comparison, the Phoenix pointing to the same point in the middle, but you see 
how the light is a little bit more fading on the edges between spill and spot. You see it here on the road, there's no sharp edge. Maybe with the bigger head of the jet beam, no, the jet beam even has same a very very nice light distribution I'd say so between me and the point on the hill there's no big difference look here there's no no big uh, there is no there is no big border again 35 tech 1000 lumens and oops make a direct comparison again P P35 tech 1000 lumens and this is 1900 lumens from the Olight 1000 lumens P35 tech and this is what we get from a modern flashlight with a TRI optic. Now direct comparing the Phoenix P35R cold light and the nicer warmer tint from the Olight. Look how different the beam shape is and if that's needed to you. But of course in front of me try to look here in the road the TRA makes a very nice even light distribution here in the spill as well of course so try that's the jet beam jet 3 MR versus the Olight and now Jet 3 MR versus Phoenix P PD 36 R. Is it? Uh, was the 35 Tech? Oops, uh, sorry for that. Now Jet Beam 3 MR versus Phoenix PD 36 are of course so there is not big difference 1600 lumens to 1700 on switch on so depending on the temperature oh well, that's two of them it's nicer but phoenix jet beam phoenix to be honest maybe on the PC but in real life I could not say there is a very big noticeable difference between these two so again trying so again that's the nice warm light of the Olight and the Phoenix TR optic TIR optic versus reflector D-domed but I think the D-domed LED does not make a big difference under the optics so having both so even then you see here the spot in the middle so what well, let's keep it on thanks for watching hopefully you got some in So thanks for watching, hopefully you got some impressions how these three flashlights and the comparisons they work in the outside and which one is the one for you. So thanks for watching, bye bye.